MODIS was founded in 1999 and originally was uh, called Vision Wireless. We uh, primarily specialized in creating software and account management solutions for large enterprise. In 2011, Vision merged with Walsh Wireless, and Walsh was specialized in the uh, sale, distribution, and configuration of MTEM devices and hardware. The combination of the two companies allowed us to create complete end-to-end -end solutions for our customers. In 2012, we changed our name to Modus. Our customer list is primarily comprised of large enterprise, and as you can see, pretty diverse. In working with our customers, one of the things that we realized is one of the biggest challenges that they had is that the uh, industry at large was kind of filled with component providers. There was device manufacturers, wireless carriers, hosting companies, software development companies, and third-party logistics companies, and not very many companies that were there to actually put together a complete end-to-end -end solution for a customer. And the message that resonated the loudest with us is that our customers didn't want to create their own solution, and they didn't want to manage it on an ongoing basis either. So what Modus's objective was really to kind of create a complete business platform for our customers and not only develop solutions, but provide the ongoing management of that solution. So if we start with the development cycle, we'll help our customers choose their hardware and devices, deal with any sort of firmware configuration issues, help them with wireless carrier or ISP selection, uh, configure and create a device gateway, and configure a data platform, integrate any sort of third-party applications or partners that they need, aid in the development of web and mobile applications, and then assist with lifecycle planning. Once out of the development stage, we enter the lifecycle stage, where we'll actually warehouse the inventory of devices for our customers, um, and provide them with real-time reporting on that. We'll process orders either through API, web portal, or whatever means work for them. Once we receive an order, we'll pull the device from inventory, we'll activate it, stage it, kit it, run it through QA testing, package it the way they want to, and ship it out to the end users. In addition to that, forward logistics will provide reverse logistics service for devices that come back and need to go back into regular inventory. I'd say most important to our customers is the business intelligence that we give them on a real-time basis. So they always kind of have a gauge for how the deployment's going or what their particular application is doing. And of course, we provide customer support as well. So to illustrate this sort of end-to-end -end complete solution, I'm going to talk to you guys about eSurance. With eSurance, we developed their DriveSense application, which is eSurance's implementation of a usage-based insurance program. So we started by making certain hardware components available to eSurance. We worked with our partners at CalAMP, DanLaw, and L1 Technologies to give them a device array with some diversity. We worked with our partner Sprint to provide the wireless connectivity, and then did a very complicated multi-point integration to really kind of round out the whole program. We have our device gateway, so all the devices report into various gateways, and then roll into our data platform so the data is normalized. We take that data and make it available on the eSurance uh, DriveSense web portal for the policyholders, and then we also package up the data and transmit it off to Towers Watson for driver scoring. In addition to that portion of the integration, we have multiple points of integration within eSurance's customer service system so that their reps can check vehicle compatibility in real time, see the inventory, and process orders all within the way they're used to doing business. So if we look at the way the overall eSurance workflow goes, a customer will read out, reach out to uh, eSurance's customer service rep expressing interest in the DriveSense program, primarily because they offer discounts on insurance. The first thing the customer service rep does is actually cross-reference the policyholder's VIN against our system to make sure it's compatible with the devices that we offer. And that's all done transparently through an API connected to the CRM system. Once that compatibility is established, they'll take the order information, and that order is transmitted to us electronically. Now we've received the order, we pull the device from inventory, activate it, provision it, quality assurance testing, staging, kitting, ship it out to the end user. During this whole process, eSurance is kept completely up to date because we're transmitting status in real time, sending tracking numbers and everything else. Once that device becomes active and starts transmitting location data, we'll actually send that data back to eSurance, which is an important step in their customer relationship portion because they need to know whether or not the driver actually installed the unit in their car. And if they don't, then they circle around and follow up with the uh, 
policyholder to uh, figure out what the issue is. In addition to that, the data becomes available on the DriveSense portal, and then Towers Watson begins receiving the data for the scoring. So just to sort of give you an illustration of what we've done with the insurance. Here's the DriveSense portal that's uh, made available to all the insurance policyholders. When they log in, they get a quick snapshot of their driving behavior against the overall average for the DriveSense program. So here you can see the number of harsh events, average driving time, miles driven, number of trips. If they want to do a locate on the device, they can click that. Quickly brings up the last known location of the device. They can drill down and see individual trips by selecting them from a date. And from here, there's a, a start and finish point. If there are any harsh events along this journey, they'd be flagged with the little red icon on the screen. And then there's some average stats, like their average speed, maximum speed, total distance driven, start and stop times, et cetera. Another layer we add to this is alerts. So if a policyholder wanted to receive email-based alerts if a vehicle exceeded a certain speed, or if the car was driven in any sort of harsh way, most of the units that we're implementing in these vehicles have GPS as well as accelerometer. So we have business rules that sort of determine what would constitute a harsh event. Or if the uh, vehicle is driven outside of uh, certain time parameters. So in creating these various end-to-end -end solutions for our customers, being in the business of managing enterprise accounts for 14 years, certain horizontal specialties sort of emerged from these very tight vertical integrations that we've done. Uh, wireless management, deployment logistics, lifecycle management are all things that we kind of consider ourselves to have a fair amount of expertise in. And one of the products that I'm going to show you today that is more of a horizontally focused product would be our DNA platform. DNA provides real-time visibility and account management on a customer's wireless account. DNA is network-based, so we're receiving all of our data off of the network, so there's no applications to load on devices, no configuration changes, nothing altering firmware. It's pretty much plug and play. And today, we're currently managing 200,000 devices. So now I'll show you a little bit more detail about DNA. So when a customer first logs into DNA, the first place they land is on a dashboard page. This dashboard page kind of gives them a quick snapshot of their wireless account and what's going on. There's a total subscriber count, where they're sitting in the current bill cycle, pie charts that depict uh, unused versus used devices within that bill cycle, uh, pooling usage, so if they're on a, uh, some sort of pooling plan where everything aggregates together, this is sort of a real-time meter of how much data has been used, and then indicators of any sort of overages that might exist on the account. Now, one of the major design parameters that we put into DNA is that we want to give our customers the ability to go from high level down to granular really quickly. And that's sort of a recurring theme throughout the site. So if I click on any of these links, like the 60 subscribers with text overage, it'll drill down and give me that list quickly. And that takes us to the next page, which is the subscriber page. So the subscriber page basically lists out every single device that's on that customer's wireless account. Um, if you start on the left side, there's a free text search that lets you search for groups of devices or specific devices. So if I entered in a specific MEID, we could drill down to just that specific device quickly. We have a multi-layered filtering in here where if you wanted to basically create multiple layers of filters, if you will, to uh, find certain devices, we could basically create a filter that says, show me all devices that have used at least two text messages and two megabytes of data. Once that filter is applied, it narrows down to just what's shown there. Along with the uh, premise of showing granular data, if you click on a subscriber, you're taken to a detail page that shows much, you know, basically all the information related to the device, activation date, uh, contract end date, current plan, 
and gives you the ability to change plans on the fly, swap devices out, and a feature that we've added is allowing our customers to add tags to a device. So if they wanted to create their own grouping of devices by associating with tags, that could be done. They could also drill down to detail usage and see each individual time the device connected and jump into historical usage and see the device's usage through multiple billing periods in the past. We provide activation support as well with individual activation. The user pretty much just fills out this field and um, what we've done to kind of simplify this process is built associations between devices, plans, and features for them so there's not a, an overload of options for them to choose from. Bulk activation workflow. We kind of uh, tried to stay consistent with a uh, wizard format where they could just sort of step through, upload a file, select the plan, and basically watch, walk through each step of this wizard to activate any number of devices into the thousands. Uh, one thing that I failed to show is that there's also the ability to do bulk changes. We have customers in DNA that have accounts of 30 to 50,000 devices, and we give them the ability to swap ESNs in bulk, do bulk plan changes, or add device tags to large groups of devices in bulk. Same concept with the wizard format. Walk through, upload a file with the devices, add the tagging information, anything you want to add. Danny also gives you the ability to add policies to the system. Policies basically watch for certain types of usage behavior. So one idea would be to build policies that maybe watch for overages, or build policies that watch for a lack of usage that might be indicative of some sort of issue that needs to be rectified. Creating a policy. Once again, we try to take something relatively complicated and make it easy, and it's back to the, the same wizard format, where you step through, naming the policy, choosing what you want to watch, and all the way through. What's unique about policies is once you get to the end, so you can send email notifications to any number of addresses, pull them from templates, and the final step would be to actually take action against that device and basically suspend or modify its rate plan uh, based upon that policy being triggered. By default, all policies that are triggered show up on the alerts page. They're listed out here, can be exported to Excel. Reports, same concept here. We can build out templates for canned reports. Customers taking through the, the wizard format that they're already familiar with because it's just recurring throughout the whole site. Running a report's relatively easy. Click Run. Choose which billing periods you want to apply to. Click Run Report. And the data is instantly generated and can be exported to Excel. So that's what I have to show you today. I tried very hard to stay within my 15-minute parameter. <laughs> I uh, thank you all for your time. And there are four of us here. And we'll be around if you guys have any questions or want more detail on anything. Thank you.